Hey everyone, welcome back to another session and today's session is going to be very interesting and super fun. So in today's session, we'll, sh we'll be building our own Flappy Bird game. So as you might know, this game was very popular once uh, back in the days. So this game was very interesting and it was also super difficult to play so i mean people would score 50 points and so share their scores on social media and challenge their friends and things like that so i mean this game is very fun to play i mean yeah so what we're going to be doing today is we'll build this game from scratch using javascript and there are several advantages of doing that so one of them being that we can suit the game like we can change things to prefer uh, to cater to our own needs so we can make it super easy or we can make it super difficult so yeah without further ado let's get started so first let's just talk about the assembly so the assembly is a smart lab based out of n5 since december 2014 and we have provided over 250 free workshops over the course of around five years and these workshops they are divided into three categories hack, code, and data science. Now workshops that deal with embedded systems, IoT or hardware devices, etc. fall into the category of hack workshops. Like workshops like today's which deal with specifically coding projects and any use of APIs or gaming projects or creating apps and things like that come under the category of code. And lastly, we have the data science category which is quite self-explanatory but all the topics dealing with big data, analytics, machine learning, AI come under this category. So our target audience are students, professionals and entrepreneurs but we, are, we welcome everyone for, to attend our workshops. And we focus on smart technology and its practical applications and you can know more about us at our forum which is members.theassembly.a. And don't forget to tag us on our social media where we are there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. You can use our handles to tag us on our social media. Now starting off we will talk about HTML canvas. So this is something that we will be using in today's project. So HTML can this canvas element of the H is, is a part of HTML5 and it basically allows us to draw on top. Uh, so basically it allows us to draw on the HTML. So this is the basic of basis of making a game in HTML uh, or JavaScript for that matter. We will use our JavaScript code to draw images onto the canvas and then we will keep on uh, moving the images based on the code. So we will get into that later but it is important that you have a basic concept of what canvas is. So now as for the resources that we use for this project and so these are the resources but all these resources will be there in the and the code as well will be there in the description. So in the description there will be a link to github you can download all these resources and the code as well. So we have the background over here, then we have the flappy bird itself, then we have the foreground. So as you might remember this foreground comes over here and this is these some of these images are just scaled down. So I scaled them down to just fit into the presentation but actual images are uh, somewhat bigger than these. And this is the pipe as you might remember. So this is the pipe from the top and this is the pipe from the bottom. So these are and also uh, apart from these we have two audio files like the one for the time when the a person scores and the other one is when the bird flies. So these are the two sounds that we have as well. Now a bit of logic explanation. So we will go into detail when we are talking through the code but for the time being we need to understand these points because these are very crucial in understanding the code later on. So uh, if you see this image of the bird itself, so every image for that matter has two coordinates x and y coordinates. So when we are talking about the x and y coordinate of the bird for example, this is what we are talking about. So this is the x and y coordinate of the bird. And 
this over here the in, is the entire width of the bird and this is the height of the bird. So let us say if we want to choose a point, so we want we want to find out what is the width of this area over here like the beak of the bird that will be the x position of the bird plus the width. The same thing goes for if you want to find out the location or the coordinate for the bottom part of the bird which will be the y location of the y coordinate of the bird plus the bird's height. Uh, the reason I am telling all this is because we will be using these in the code later on. And the same goes for the pipe. So, this is the height of pipe 1, height of pipe 2 and this is the gap. So, we will come across this part. So, we will come across this gap in the code as well. So, this is some very basic idea that you need to have is of about these coordinates. So, once we are once you are good with this we are good to go. So, let us get coding. All right, so let's get started. So open up your Visual Studio Code and open a for I have opened a folder. You can download this exact folder to start off, and the link to the the link will be in the description below. You can download it from there. So this folder, as you can see, contains all the necessary requirements for this uh, project. So we have the images, all of them over here. Then we have the sounds that are required for the project, and then. We have an empty JavaScript file that we will just type in the code into, type the code into and then we have a pre-made existing HTML file. So this HTML file has the title, the headings and most importantly the canvas. So the canvas is the place that we will draw components into and this is where our entire game will be. So let us head to JavaScript and let us get started with writing code. So first off we will create a, what we will create first is we will get the canvas from the HTML and then we will save it into a variable so that we do not have to call document.get element by id every time. So we will say where canvas equals document.get element by id okay dot get element by id and then for as the id will pass in canvas because this is what we named it there in our html file. Also we will create a variable for holding on the con context because this will have enable us to have methods that we will use. So it is canvas dot get context. and then 2D in yeah 2D uh, yeah I forgot the semicolons over there yes okay so now that we are done with this we will start loading in some inf uh, loading in our images so let us start by doing that so we will create a variable for every image so let us load the bird image first so bird var bird equals new image okay so now we will just create and create it like this and then we will give pass in the source later on so I will just copy this line and paste it there for other pictures as well so over here we have the background here we have the foreground then we have our two pipes so we can name them or P1 or and P2. So P1 is the upper pipe and P2 is the lower pipe. So yes, so now we have created all our images. Now what we want to do is we want to pass in the source for these images. So like where they are actually placed. So in our case they are placed in the same directory inside the images folder. So we will do that. So we will say bird dot source and then equals to we will pass in the path. So the path is the same directory so we do not need to write our entire directory entire path. So images slash bird dot jpeg or not jpeg sorry png and we can just copy and paste this for others as well because it is going to be similar to this. Okay, so 
three, four, five. Yes. So instead of bird, we have the background, and then we have the foreground, and then we have P1 and finally P2. And we'll just change the names over here. So this is not bird, but it is background. This is foreground. This is pipe north and this is pipe south. So this is what we have done till now. So we have just loaded our images onto our loaded our images onto our canvas. So now we'll create some variables that we'll use throughout this project. So first variable that we need is the gap. So this gap is as you might know when you play flappy birds you have the two poles and then there is a gap between them. So this represent this variable represents that gap. So we will okay one thing I forgot is a semicolon at the end of every line here. So let me just go ahead and add that and now this is the gap variable. Now we can also create a variable called bird x. So this will this specifies the x value of the bird. So the x coordinate of the bird's location and we will initialize it to 10. So it will be bird will be located at the x coordinate. So the x coordinate of the bird will be 10. Then we have another variable which will be bird y. And again we will give it 150 pixels. And one other one we'll create is constant and we won't just initialize it now. We'll do that later. Another one is the gravity. So this is essentially so that whenever the bird is moving it has to go down like in the game. So by default if you don't press any key the bird falls down. So this is what the gravity uh, variable will enable us to do. So we will use this gravity variable to uh, make the bird fall essentially. So yeah I have initialized it to 1.5 and you can change play around with these values. So if you want uh, the bird to go down slower you can reduce this value. If you want it to go faster you can increase this value that's totally up to you. And uh, lastly we also need a variable called score to hold on our score. So whenever we pass through a pipe we get a score so we need to increment this variable. So initially our scores will be 0. Alright so yeah one more thing let's go ahead and get those audio files as well. So let's import those audio files as well. So we will create a variable. So two, we have two audio files fly and score. So we will create an an audio file for so we'll get them both into our program so we'll say fly and then we can maybe say fly sound equals new audio this is very similar to the way we loaded images again we have the score so score sound equals new audio and now we when we can just pass in the source so fly sound dot source equals and again it is located in the sounds folder so sounds and then forward slash and the name of the file so the name of the file is fly dot mp3 we can copy this file and paste it here but instead of the fly sound we can name it sound or not sound score sound score sound dot source equals okay so instead of fly over here we'll change it to score so these are our two so now we have successfully loaded our two sound files as well now we want we will create an action event listener so that whenever the user presses the 
any key on the keyboard it is it, it's supposed to make the bird fly so it's supposed to make the bird go up so let's just do that so we'll say document dot add event listener and within the parentheses we will pass in two parameters with one is key down so wherever there's a key down and the second one is the function that we will use to like we'll call this function we'll it's okay you will understand this okay i forgot the semicolons again yeah so this now we'll just go ahead and create the move up function to move the bird up so let's define our function so we'll start by function definition and then name of the function move up open and close parentheses and curly braces so now what should happen is essentially when the bird is flying it has the bird has two coordinates x and y coordinates right so when the due to the effect of gravity when the bird is falling the y coordinate is getting incremented but when we press a key on the keyboard the bird is supposed to go up which means that we must uh, subtract some value from the y coordinate of the bird so that it goes up right so we'll do that we had a coordinate called bird y and we will decrement that coordinate so we'll say bird minus equals 35 or maybe 25 so every time we click on the keyboard the bird will go up by 25 pixels and then we can just play that sound so fly sound dot play so every time we click the key there is a there is there will be a flying sound played it's like how it is supposed to work like it's how you how do you how you used to play it in your phones so the same way it will work and then another thing another important thing to note is that we want to have those pipes move so those are not we won't just we don't want them to stay stationary we want them to keep on moving and then changing their shapes like it shouldn't be like the pipes are always in the same position they should alternate sometimes go up sometimes go down and things like that so in order to do achieve that functionality we will create an array called pipe so we'll create an empty array so where pipe then we will also initialize the array so the first element of the array we will pass it as so pipe at 0 is equal to this so the x coordinate is the canvas width canvas dot width comma okay only the width canvas dot width and then the y coordinate is 0 so what this basically means is that the first position of the pipe initially the pipe will be towards the end of the canvas like if let's say this is our canvas then it's supposed to be to the max right uh, yeah to the right of the canvas and then y mean y equals 0 will specify that it stops from the top of the bottom top of the canvas and goes down okay so now we can we will go to one of the or the most important function of the entire code itself which is the draw function so for the draw function we will start by the function declaration function draw and then what we will pass in through what will what this function will do is it will it is basically the core of the entire project so it will do everything 
uh, regarding like starting from moving of the pipes and then the bird and all that stuff. So, this is where you need to pay attention to. So, we will start by saying context dot draw image and then we will pass in our background and then 0 0. So, what we are doing over here is we are drawing our an image on the on the cam canvas and this image is basically the backgrounds and the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is 0. So, which basically means that our entire canvas will be filled by our background image which is this one. So, our canvas will be filled in by this image. We did not pass in the width and height of the background image because this is adjusted to fill the canvas by itself. So, if you want to adjust however, you can have extra variables which with uh, width and height over here. Next what we need to draw, uh, we, we need to create a for loop to handle the, the drawing of the pipe. So, uh, how the pipes are supposed to get drawn uh, things like that will be handled in the for loop. So, we will create a for loop which is for where i equals 0, i is less than pipe dot length and then i plus plus all right. Okay, one thing I noticed is there is an error over here because I forgot the equals to there. Yep, and now we are we should be fine. So in the for loop here, we will we will initialize our constant first, which we as you might remember we created a variable called constant over here. So we'll initialize it. So this constant will be the the height of the top pipe plus the gap. So what we want to do by using this constant is when we are trying to draw the pipe on the lower side of the image. So, where I will just come here. So, okay. So, the, the pipe 1 will be somewhere around here okay. and then there will be some part some gap over here and then pipe 2 should be drawn over here. So, when we want to draw pipe 2, we need to get the entire the height of the canvas and then we we want to subtract the height of the pipe plus this gap. So, that is what we are trying to do with this constant variable over here. So, we will say constant equals pipe 1 or we named it p 1 I guess yeah p 1 dot height plus the gap. So, this is what I just explained and now we can draw the pipes. So, we can say context dot draw image and then as parameters we can pass in. So, p 1 dot ok, no the first one is just the image and then we need to pass in the x and y coordinates of the pipe. So, now we are drawing the, the pipe on the top. So, the co x coordinate will be pipe at i position dot x and then the y position will be pipe at i dot y. So, this will be the x position of the pipe and this will be the y position of the pipe in the first uh, on in, of the pipe in the first place. So, canvas dot width the pipe will be uh, somewhere over here towards the end of the canvas and its y coordinate is 0 which specifies that it will start from here. So, I hope you understand that. And yeah, so let us go move forward. So, we will again 
con to context dot draw image for the second pipe and this time we will pass in P2 instead of P1 so the second pipe and then again pipe at I dot height and pipe at i dot y so and this this should be plus constant so as i explained earlier the height of the pipe 2 will oh sorry not it's, this is not height this is x my bad yeah so the x coordinate is should remain the same so they should both be on the same position so they should be one on top of the other and so that is why we have the same x position for both of them and the only thing we need to change is the y coordinates for both of them because as you can see the pipe north is like this and pipe south is like this. So this pipe should be at the bottom so what we try to do here is the pipe north is let us say it comes somewhere till here it ends over here and then we have this part portion as a gap and then we start to draw the pipe 2 from over here. So yeah that is what we did. Now we can go and increment so we can say pipe okay, at i dot x. Uh, sorry not increment decrement minus minus this. So what this will do is it will start moving the pipe from this position and over to the left right and right about when it reaches somewhere over here we want it to stop. So we do not want the pipe to just keep on going to the left forever we want it to stop over here and then the second pipe should come up from here with a different shape probably. So yeah we will achieve that functionality. Now in the same way to, to stop the pipe at the middle position or like somewhere around the middle we will write an if condition for that. So if pipe at i dot x so if the x coordinate of pipe is equal to 125 pixels so then what we will do is we will say pipe dot push and we will push in new coordinates for the pipe. So the new coordinates will again be x is equal to canvas dot width dot width and y will be equal to Okay, so now this time uh, y will not be equal to 0 just because we do not want this uh, so the pipes we do not want the pipes to be at the same height. So it is not like just like the pipes are this and they are just moving on the pipes need to alternate or they have they need to have some difference in their height. So some is some pipes are taller than the other some pipes are shorter things like that. So in order to do that we will use uh, the maths uh, math dot random function. So first we'll use math dot floor to round off the values, and then inside we can use math dot random. So math dot random, and then multiplied by p one dot height minus p one p one dot height. So what this will give us is it will give us a random position from somewhere around uh, somewhere around here till here. So uh, starting from 0 to the maximum position of the to the maximum position of the pipe 1. So this is this and now let us go ahead and type uh, type the code for our game over situation. 
so when will our game get over so before we even do that let's try and see how this code runs so if we open up our folder and double click index.html okay uh, it's probably because uh, we haven't yet called the draw function so let's see if we call the draw function what does what type of output do we get so let's call it and see okay nothing just happened because we didn't do that so never mind we'll just uh, proceed and then we can try the code out later so now let's type in our game over condition so the game will only be over when let's say for instance the bird hits this pipe or hits somewhere over here or hits this position the front end of the pipe too or or somewhere over here so we'll type this long if statement to kind of mimic this and this should also be in our function uh, in our wait this should also be in our for loop so we'll create another if statement within our for loop and this if statement will be for the game over condition so if the bird x so yeah one more thing that you must know is so this is our bird and this is the bird x coordinate and this is the bird y coordinate and this is the bird x coordinate this is the bird y coordinate and right over here at this point the x coordinate of the bird is bird x coordinate plus the height of the plus the height of the bird uh, sorry the y coordinate of the the y coordinate of the bird at this position is the y bird y plus the height of the bird and similarly the x coordinate at this end is bird x plus the high uh, the width of the bird so this is our bird x this is our bird y and right over here we have bird y plus height and over here we have bird x plus bird width so we will say if our bird x plus bird dot width so this means that the front portion of the bird so the face of the bird if the face of the bird is greater than or equal to pipe at i dot x so which means that pipe at i so the first pipes x position so this will okay over here so this means that if the bird is somewhere between here and here so greater than or equal to so if the bird like crashes into the pipe so if bird x plus bird width greater than or equal to pipe one dot x and so two ampersands signifying am and bird x is less than or equal to pipe at i dot x plus pipe one dot width so what this means is if the position of the bird is somewhere between the starting of the pipe and the ending of the pipe then it's game over situation so like if it crashes into the pipe that's when the game should be over so we have and we'll add another condition so we have and bird y 
so the y coordinate of the bird is less than or equal to pipe at i dot y plus p1 dot height. So, if the bird's y coordinate is less than or equal to the y coordinate of the pipe plus its height then also it is a game over situation. So, if all these conditions are true then so all these conditions are true then only there will be a game over and then or so this is all these are all the conditions for the upper pipe. So, the pipe 1 now we will add in conditions for pipe 2 which is the lower pipe. So, if bird y bird y dot oh sorry bird y plus bird dot height is greater than or equal to pipe at i dot y plus constant. Constant. Okay, so what this means is that the y coordinate of the bird plus height which basically means that this end of the bird so like the bottom part the, the bottom most side of the bird is greater than or equal to pipe dot y plus constant. So, pipe dot y means the height of the pipe 1 plus the constant is some meaning that it is not touching any of the inner sides of the pipe. And then we have another or uh, so after the constant we will have another or or the bird y so bird y plus bird height so we can say bird dot height is greater than or equal to canvas dot height minus foreground dot height so yeah so this is our last condition for the game over uh, so, what this basically means is like we have our background and then we will have a foreground on top of it. So, this is this basically represents the ground. So, if the bird falls onto the ground then it should be game over and that is what we are trying to do over here. So, if bird y plus bird height so like the bottom most part of the bird is the y coordinate of the bottom most part of the bird is greater than the canvas height minus the foreground height. So, as I said the foreground will be placed on top of the background. So, this is the height of the foreground and this is the entire height of the background. So, the foreground will be somewhere around here. So, if the bird falls below that position then it, is, it should be game over. Now, we can finally come out of this. Uh, function and we can or not function for sorry our for loop and then what we will do is we will okay uh, where is our function is our function this okay so this is our for loop so outside our for loop we will say context dot draw image and then we, over here we are drawing our foreground and again the the x coordinate will be 0 because the four or we want the foreground to be starting from the leftmost side of the canvas so that's why the x coordinate is 0 and then but we want the y coordinate okay sorry the y coordinate should be so okay if we head back to over somewhere here the y coordinate should be the height of the canvas 
minus the height of the foreground. So, specifying that it should be somewhere around here because this entire thing is the height of the canvas and the height of the foreground will be till somewhere around here, but we want the y coordinate to start from here. So, that is why we will pass in uh, canvas. So, canvas dot height minus foreground dot height. So, this is our uh, this is our what you call the y coordinate for the foreground and ok one thing I totally forgot is we left this method empty. So, yeah we need to fill in this method as well before moving on to the other thing. So, if uh, if the game gets over, so what we will do is we would like to reload the page so that we can play the game again. So, we can say location dot reload. So, this will reload the web page for us allowing us to, so it will restart the game and then we can play it again. And now just before we and exit the for loop, we, we will create another if statement. So, if pipe at i dot x is equal equal ok equal equal 5 then we will add the score. So, score plus plus and score sound score sound dot play. So, if the uh, if the bird passes through the pipes then we will increment the score and we will play the score sound ok. Coming back to where we were, so we drew the foreground on the canvas and now we will draw the bird on the canvas. So, we will say context dot draw image and then the first argument will be the picture in itself. So, bird then we have our bird x coordinate which we created as a variable and our bird y coordinate. All right. Now, we will increment the bird y. So, the bird y will keep on incrementing with the gravity. So, the y coordinate of the bird will always have uh, gravity added to it each time this code runs because we want to mim mimic the bird falling down. So, we will say bird y plus equals ok plus equals gravity and lastly we will say context dot fill style equals uh, hash 0 0 0 then we will say context dot font equals 20 pixels for Dana and we can also say context dot fill text. So, we can pass in the score. So, score and then score and then the x coordinate. So, x coordinate is 10 the y coordinate, the y coordinate is the canvas height, canvas dot height minus 20. So, what we did over here is we created fonts to write the score onto the canvas. So, we, we would be able to see the score somewhere over to the bottom of the canvas. So, maybe somewhere around over here. So, 
there will there will be a foreground on top of it. So, the score will come somewhere over here. And uh, lastly, we can have request animation frame and we can pass in the draw function. So, what this will do is because we want to run this draw function infinitely. So, we can use a callback function to call this function. So, we only need to call the draw function once and then it will come in execute all this code and when it goes towards the end it will then call itself again. So, in a sense it will be looping infinitely. And then we can now finally we can head outside the uh, function and we can call the draw method. So, let's save and run the code. So, to run the code go to the folder and start index.html. Okay, so this is weird, we are getting an error. So, let's see what the issue is. Mm. Okay, one issue is that we have this over here, we do not need those parentheses, but the other issue is something to do with reload. So, I am guessing we have something wrong in our if statement and yeah I get it. So, this parenthesis is not supposed to end here, it is supposed to end here. So, let us save the code again and try and run it. So, index.html again. So, yeah. So, you can hear the sound as well of the bird flying and you see you can see the score as well increases and whenever if we just hit down the game ends and the page reloads. So that is how you can make your own flappy birds. I hope you enjoyed today's session and do not forget to like, subscribe our channel and share our videos with your friends so that they also know how simple it is to make your own game. So yeah this is me signing off. See you next time. Bye bye.